Mr. Cheveley. Won't you sit down? Thanks. And, you know, I can't help feeling that this disturbing new thing, this higher education of women, will deal a terrible blow to happy married life. Now, higher education of men is what I should like to see. Men need it so sadly. They do, dear. But I'm afraid such a scheme would be quite unpractical. I don't think man has much capacity for development. He's got as far as he can. And that's not far, is it? With regard to women, well, dear Gertrude, modern women understand everything, I'm told. Except their husbands. That is the one thing the modern woman never understands. And a very good thing too, dear, I dare say. It might break up many a happy home if they did. Not yours, I need hardly say, Gertrude. You have married a perfect husband. And now, dear ladies, I had better set forth. I haven't time to be idling around here all day. I should be idling around somewhere else very shortly, or I shall fall behind. No, no, I'll see myself out. No doubt you both have many pleasant reminiscences of your school days to talk over together. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Wonderful woman, Lady Markby, isn't she? Talks more and says less than anybody I ever met. Now, oh, Gertrude. Mrs. Cheveley. I think it is right to tell you that I wish you never to return to this house again. And never to attempt to contact my husband. I see that after all these years you've not changed a bit. I hope I never will. Then life has taught you nothing. It has taught me that a person who has once been guilty of a dishonest and dishonourable action may be guilty of it a second time and should be shunned. Would you apply that rule to everyone? Yes, without exception. Then I am sorry for you, Gertrude. Very sorry for you. I thank you for your sympathy. But it is your departure I would prefer. Do you know, Gertrude, I don't mind your talking morality a bit. Morality is simply the attitude we adopt towards people whom we personally dislike. You dislike me, I am quite aware of that, and I have always detested you. And yet, I have come here to give you some advice. I hold your husband in the hollow of my hand, and if you are wise, you will make him do what I tell him. How dare you class my husband with yourself? Leave my house. You are unfit to enter it. Your house? A house bought with the price of dishonor. Everything in which has been paid for by fraud. Ask him what the origin of his fortune is. Get him to tell you how he sold to a stockbroker a cabinet secret. Learn from him to what you owe your position. It is not true. Robert, tell her it is not true. Go at once. You've done your worst now. Dear Sir Robert, Lady Chilton, unless you meet my terms, I think you'll find the worst is yet to come. You have until half past ten tonight.